Hi, Filter here. Sorry I haven't uh, done any videos. Uh, you know, the holidays, it kind of drags you into a bunch of other crap in here. Forgive the appearance of the room. I know it looks like Dresden after the bombing, but what are you going to do? I got some strawberry daiquiri uh, tea from Tivana. This is a place that's going out of business. They make all those interesting teas out there. And now you go in there and you find some of this stuff is like slashed by 30 or half. In some cases, 60%. I mean, they really have some good stuff here. I have pink lemonade uh, tea downstairs and some other stuff that smells like Fruity Pebbles. But that's neither here nor there. However, I would like to uh, talk to y'all because, you know, between um, uh, all the things when you deal with Star Trek... And I, I, I kind of wonder, there, there are some uh, interesting things out here on YouTube, some webisodes that they do, and I got to say, um, there are a few of them which I find intriguing, uh, some which I find decent. I can't say any of them are bad, per se, because the way I look at it is the people that do it, they're doing the best that they can, and they're putting a lot of heart and soul into it. But let's start with uh, a couple of, uh, a few Star Trek webisodes that I've seen, which are actually kind of interesting. Um, first is Star Trek Odyssey. This is a next generation sort of uh, continuation. Um, and it's, it's, it's decent. The only thing is, they use a lot of uh, CGI and green screen, and it might throw you off. But they do uh, put a lot of heart and soul into it. It's worth watching. It, you, again, you can find it out there on Odyssey, uh, you know, uh, Odyssey out there on YouTube. So if you ever come across it, check it out. It's not bad. Next is a um, Star Trek Phase 2. Uh, that's good. They they do a lot of stuff. There's a good amount of action in it. Uh, they introduce a good amount of new characters in it, like Star Trek Continues. It's it's a decent go-get. And again, there's a lot of um, drive and soul into this, into this story. And again, it's worth watching. They're even trying to bridge the gap between the end of the five-year mission and the motion picture by um, uh, showing the, the Enterprise getting somewhat semi-refitted, where the nacelles are s more sleek back, and, uh, you know, the, and the torpedo tubes uh, have been moved down to the secondary hull. It, it's pretty interesting. Again, if you ever watch it, well, if they ever produce any more, thank you, CBS, uh, you know, you'll probably uh, dig that. Next is Star Trek Renegades. This is like everybody from Voyager, Deep Space Nine, the original series, and maybe even Next Generation, all showing up for uh, this story. But unfortunately, thanks to CBS screwing things up, it's no longer Chekhov and Section uh, and Section Thirty One and Tuvok trying to protect the Federation. It's now this Commonwealth, and they had to change even um, a few things in it. it. Again, a somewhat intriguing idea. I mean, uh, the captain of the uh, one ship, she's a, the daughter of Khan Noonien Singh. I, at least that was the premise. Part two of the Renegades uh, story Again, that's where they eliminated everything Trek. But the actors are still there. They had to change so many things in there. Uh, next. Um, oh, boy. Starship Farragut. Star Trek Farragut. And Starship Exeter. I put those two. They're both in a very interesting uh, little thing there. Basically, uh, the Exeter is uh, Captain by a new captain and crew after the old uh, crew turned to crystals and uh, Ronald Tracy was arrested. 
And uh, I believe there's an episode called For Want of a Nail that... And it's it's very interesting, and it ties into a episode of the original series. Worth watching. Uh, this this next one, Star Trek Phoenix. This by far had the best potential out of every Star Trek uh, spinoff I've ever seen. Basically, it's showing the aftermath of the destruction of Romulus and what the Federation is doing, the new technology that's come about. You know, uh, they had you have a new transporter that's even more advanced and and the like. And it, it's it's again, it's one of those things where you know, upon watching it, it it's really really great to watch. You know, it, it's it's fun. The ship itself is. It looks like a very large version of Voyager. And, uh, again, they only had, like, one episode, so I don't know what's come about it. I'll have to check and see if there's another episode. Next, this one, this, this one is called Star Trek Outlaws. Now, the premise of this is very, very interesting, and I would love to see a live-action version of this. I think it would be a much better Star Trek than Star Trek Discovery, in my opinion. Okay, here's the premise. I'm not sure whether it takes place in another galaxy or another universe, but we'll say it takes place in another galaxy. The human culture there has warp drive. The fastest the ships can go is warp two. No shields, no photon torpedoes. No phasers. They don't have food synthesizers, transporters, or shields for their vessels. The culture has no knowledge of ancient languages. And it's run by some empire that started out very, very benign and it is now kind of... Um, well, uh, it's now this weird civil war is going on. Now, imagine all this going on and suddenly a pristine Constitution class vessel literally shows up on a, in front of a guy who's doing salvage. A Constitution class vessel, pristine. Maximum speed warp 8.5 or warp 9. Transporter, shields, photon torpedoes, the whole nine. And now they're giving this. Now they want to keep it out of the hands of this empire, which is going through the Civil War, because they know how the Civil War is just going to basically screw everybody up. So that's what they do. They take the ship and they go about doing their thing. Very intriguing story. There's about four episodes. So if you ever come across it, just... Type in Star Trek Outlaws, start from part one, and enjoy the ride. All right. Now we get to, of course, uh, Star Trek Continues. And and I'll put that in a tie-in with Star Trek Axanar. We've all seen the uh, Axanar trailer. And it just gets me so angry that this beautiful concept of Axanar was thrown aside for SJW I don't know I I don't even know how to define it but uh, y'all know what I'm y'all know what I'm getting at so like I said do yourselves a favor check out some of these things if you haven't check it out uh, and particularly, I like I said, Star Trek Outlaws. That's the one I really, really honestly like. And I really think they should do a uh, live action uh, version of. And uh, let's see. There's a few. Oh, I think um, Star Trek Farragut. They did a couple of animated episodes. Which in reminiscent of the old Filmation uh, Star Trek that came out in 1973. 
it, again, it's one of those things that is really, really worth watching. So, again, um, if you ever get a chance, just check it out. Uh, oh, and there's a few other things which uh, take place during the time of Enterprise. I can't remember them offhand, but if you guys have seen them, please put it in the uh, Daily Bob below. <laughs> so, um, I guess that's it for now. And until then, I hope you guys are having a very, very uh, good week. And uh, check the bell to see if there's for notifications. Uh, rate these, this video if you like it. And until then, I'll uh, try to come out with something interesting uh, maybe uh, next later on this week. Till then, I'm Filter. I'm out of here.